Still ahead, Memphis State against Western Kentucky in game two of our doubleheader here at Madison Square Garden. With me is Ed Badger, assistant coach and head scout for the Boston Celtics. And Ed, when you watch a ball game like this early in the season, what are the things you specifically look for in a ball player? Well, first of all, we're looking for uh, a pro body, a kid that we think could play up here with a pro body. Quickness, shooting ability, this three-point play, a lot of people don't like it. We like it because it's going to force teams to play man-to-man, -man, and I think it's going to put a little more shooting back in the college game, and we're always looking for shooters also. Does it open it up for perhaps the, the little guy on the outside now that you're not just taking players into the collegiate ranks who are the Jets of the world? Well, I think so. You know, Spud Webb's opened it up for the, for the little guy. A lot of people have, have looked at some little people. We had Andre Turner from Memphis State with us for a little while. Uh, I, think it, I think it's really going to help the overall game, and especially from our viewpoint, we can, we can see some of the things we want to see that take place in the NBA. All right, a quick comment on several players we just saw. First of all, Freddie Banks. Well, I, I didn't know. The first half, uh, he was quiet. He, he was very quiet, but then uh, then he came on and did the things that he could really do, and it seems like a very fine shooter. Uh, Armin Gillian's very strong. I thought his shooting improved as the game went on. Blackwell did a very fine job uh, handling the ball, shooting, directing the team. Uh, he's a very nice player, too. How about Tim Perry, the big man on the inside for Temple? Well, he's really improved uh, miraculously over one year. Uh, he can really jump. I think he's just a junior, and by the time he's a senior, he's going to be one of the top uh, college players in America. Well, Ed Badger, the chief scout of the Boston Celtics, the assistant coach, thanks for sharing some thoughts with us. My pleasure. Let's go back to Howard David and Bill Rafter. Well, thank you, Bruce Beck. You, we talked in the second half of the game about Vrieswick and how he wanted the ball in the key situations. Here, Bruce is talking to Ed Badger, <laughs> who's with the Boston Celtics, who has a guy named Bird that knows uh, how to get the ball in crunch time right. in key situations. Personifies winning. Yeah, absolutely. Second half, very exciting, particularly for the Nevada Las Vegas and their fans. But one of the big plays of, the, of that second half, watch Howard Evans. Well, of course, the guards, I believe, for this club, just sensational. Vrieswick here. Can play guard and small forward, filled it up well all night. But I have to really hand it to Vegas. They hung tough. You know, Banks struggled. This is a shot that shouldn't have gone. He really uh, in the playground, get pushed off the court for it. But that was the heart in Vegas. They kept coming. A lot of aggressive basketball by both clubs. This is one of the few times you may have seen this club, Vegas, push the ball up the floor. And here they really didn't have a fast break, but for, don't tell Freddie Banks that. Of course, Blackwell trying to save. Really not a good pass because there was no place for Blackwell to go. And here Banks with a little hang time, little dipsy do, oh, a little bit nice. of it, a little off. That Freddie, was nice. He really came alive in the second half. At 17 points in the second half out of 22, Armin Gilliam really played well. Very quietly, it seemed, statistically, and that he was, did a good job. And that was that, you had mentioned, the three-guard set got him free. There was much more motion. Sound basketball. Graham kicking it, and this is the big guy once again, Armin Gilliam. And <laughs> I'll tell you, he didn't know what he was going to do later. Patio, Gerald Patio with that deep one. Again, squaring up when he's set, he can drill it. And here's and that's where that Temple little, ties it up. That's the one to tie, and of course the free throw. Right, and then here is where it all came down and to. Look at the defense, too. Gerald Patio. Freezeway couldn't have been any closer. Look at him, hands up. Oh, what a way to start. Of course, finish the game and start the season. I think uh, Freezewick is still standing out there waiting for Patio to come down. Starting lineups for tonight's second game, Western Kentucky and Memphis State. We go now to John Condon, the voice of Madison Hello, Square Garden. Thank you. starting lineups for the second game at the forward for Memphis State, Vincent Askew. At forward for Western Kentucky, Kennard Johnson. At forward for Memphis State, Ken Moody. Kentucky, 
tell us, Frank. At center for Memphis State, Marvin Alexander. At center for Western Kentucky, Clarence Mark. At guard for Memphis State, John Wilcock. for Western Kentucky, James McNary. At guard for Memphis State, Dwight Boyd. And at guard for Western Kentucky, Brett McNeil. And the coach of the Memphis State Tigers, Chris Fitch. And the coach of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, Murray Arnold. The officials, Jody Sylvester, Larry Lembo, and Michael Crowley. All right, we're just moments away from the opening tip for the second semifinal game between Western Kentucky and Memphis State. We'll be back in just a moment. The cheerleaders for Memphis State University's Tigers have ventured up from Memphis, Tennessee and the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Three officials tonight as you look at the starting matchups. Boyd McNeil, Will Fong, McNary for Western Kentucky. The middle, Alexander and Martin. Moody, Frank, Askew and Johnson. Of course, Askew has been around. And Larry Finch, first-year coach. Two first-year coaches in the second game of this doubleheader. Murray Arnold and Larry Finch quickly. Memphis State in the forecourt. It will set them for you as they get the ball. Western Kentucky with James McNary and Brett McNeil at the guards. This is Tellus Frank, 42, 33, Kennard Johnson. Pretty pay oh. play inside on the basket by Clarence Martin. The foul by John Wilfong. You can't say enough for screening away. Clarence Martin screamed away, and with his body, he could block the entire section. <laughs> and, of course, the switch occurred, and he was free. Ends up with a potential three-pointer. Clarence Martin, six-foot-eight senior from Alexander City, Alabama. One of the leaders of this team, this Western Kentucky unit. And he is served first at all the meals. <laughs> Nobody would ever make that mistake. He's a big man. This is John Wilfong. Western Kentucky man-to-man, -man, as was Memphis State. Western Kentucky likes to extend the floor as well. Marvin Alexander and John Wilfong. Vincent Askew. Askew wanted it back. Wilfong looking the other direction for Kenneth Moody. A little short pop that does not go down, and Brett McNeil with the rebound. You missed the first game. Temple and Nevada Las Vegas put on a March type game intensity level. With Nevada Las Vegas winning by two. Penetration by McNeil and it goes out of bounds off of Western Kentucky. So it'll be Memphis State ball. John Wilfong shadowed by James McNary. What they're gonna try and do with Wilfong is get a five second call by making him dribble and dribble. Good cut. It was a brush before for Wilfong. They used that high post to cut off. Of course, that big back side of Marvin Alexander comes in handy. Brett McNeil, 23, commits the foul. Three really excellent officials here in this game. Jody Sylvester, Mickey Crowley, and Larry Limbo. Eastern official primarily on the turnaround, and a pretty one by Dwight Boyd. Smooth with that spin. Go 2-2-1. Two, two, they break the pressure. McNeil and McNary. The two guards, Clarence Martin at center. Tell us Frank and Kennard Johnson, the forwards. Go back screen low by the guard. McNary tripped. No foul, he tripped over, might have been his own feet, and a foul from the backside is hit. Tell us Frank commits the personal. Uh, well, you hate to see your big guys pick those fouls up. So Murray Arnold just stood up and said, tell us, not back there, what a wasted one. Right here, he's beat, not much else he can do. Even if he gets it, it's an automatic. Those reach around fouls. 
drive it crazy. Good cut again, three times. And Western Kentucky plays good man to man. They've been lost three times on just a single cut. You look at Murray Arnold, the coach at uh, Western Kentucky, and you look, he looks like a very mild-mannered guy. Then all of a sudden, the poison sets in the coaches. They come off the bench like a shot. Pretty jump. Nice jump shot by Brett McNeil. He's your three-point shooter, too. Three-point shooters took over the stage in the first game. Freddie Banks, Mike Frieswick, Gerald Patio with the winner. Nice, nice cut inside. Oh, nice back door. Good Pretty. touch pass, too. Will Fong, that name's been called out at the Garden over the years. Marvin Alexander with the lay-in. Five four Western Kentucky in front, and the lay in the easy tip. Is it going to count? Yes. Kennard Johnson. Some impressive front line, Howard. Big mobile. Yes, they are. Six nine, six ten, six eight across the front. It's going to be Dwight Boyd, I believe. Boyd gets called for the personal. That is the second against Western against Memphis State. Western Kentucky each has, also has two. James McNary, triple team. It finds McNeil, his backcourt mate. And a foul away from the ball is going to go against Memphis State. I think Moody again, no? Kenneth Moody? It's either Askew or Moody. Askew gets the call. They've been fronting and fighting to get position inside the post, which you love your players to do. Look at this. Oh! Bring the house down. Clarence Martin <laughs> with the jam, and it's 9-4 Western. Boyd with the fall away. Force. Bad shot selection, the rebound of Kennard Johnson of Western Kentucky, and here come the Hilltoppers. They lead at 9-4 with 16-24 remaining first half. The winner plays Nevada Las Vegas in the final tomorrow night at 9 Eastern. Baseline jumper was there momentarily. More difficult shot doesn't go. The follow was almost in. Well, Kennard Johnson did everything but lay that one in softly. Good hustle to get inside position. Good block. Excellent defensive play. They're going to call a oh, foul. I got a, on, they're going to call a foul one. on McNeary. And I agree what do you with think? You. I agree with you all the way. Yep. Murray Arnold shaking his hands too. I got to walk. Limbo made the call, but Crowley might have agreed with McNeary. I got to walk here. Double dribble uh -huh. first, right? Double dribble, walk. <laughs> Whatever you want. Anything but the call. <laughs> Met the state substitutions in the game. Sylvester Gray and watch this guy. They love him. Ed Badger off the air talked about him. Speaking of NBA bodies. Jumper is off the mark. McNeary has to go off his knee and out of bounds. It'll be Memphis State ball. We have a timeout, a television timeout with 15.54 remaining first half. Western Kentucky in front of Memphis State early on. They lead it by five. See, this guy came up from Memphis, Tennessee with a suit. He, he went down the 42nd Street, and now look what he's wearing. Well, he's very relaxed. Spent a little extra for the seats. 9-4 <laughs> Western Kentucky's Hilltoppers in front of the Tigers in Memphis State. Moody to the basket in a pretty move. Sure was. Great extension with that release. Kenneth Moody, a senior. So almost this entire Memphis State team is from the city of Memphis. Talk about locally grown product. Saves on the budget? Absolutely. The recruiting budget is very minimal so far as transportation. Oh, oh they're going to call it on Clarence Martin, but I would have liked to just see the two of them go at one another. Clarence Martin gets called for the foul. Sylvester Gray and Martin just going after one another. Sylvester Gray is only a freshman. He's 6'6", 230. Whoa. From Arlington, Tennessee. That is a, we talked to me, uh, Badger was talking at halftime or uh, between games about the pro body. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Askew. Because Memphis State lost so many players. 
graduation is almost a nice play. And a pretty move by Alexander as he gets the roll. It's a 9-8 game. It's tough to do, but Western Kentucky worked themselves out of a good defensive position. McNary and McNeil maintain the back position. Hilo, good play. On the turnaround, but not get the roll. On the shot by Kennard Johnson. Ahead it goes. Pulling up for the jumper, and it hands it. Is Kenneth Moody. Memphis State takes the lead for the first time, 10 to 9, with 14 21 to play in the half. Tell us Frank, 6 10, handling against the pressure in the backcourt. They let Johnson and Martin do all the dirty work up front. McNary from the corner. McNary gives Western Kentucky the lead again, 11 to 10. Quickly up the floor come the Tigers. Askew, way off the mark. Of course, that was in the general vicinity, and it's going to go back to Memphis State as the ball is off McNeil. See how Western Kentucky tightens up their man-to-man -man defense. They haven't been beaten by that cut last few sequences. Almost in a complete air ball by Sylvester Gray. Looked like he forced that one up a little bit. And now Larry Finch gets off the bench, the Memphis State coach, and tells everybody to just settle down and relax. He's nope. got a very, I don't know, it's got mixed feelings about the kind of responsibility he has this year, and I'll get into that a little bit. McNeil now behind the screen. For Sylvester Gray, remember his first shot in the garden. Big dryer. That's a good point. You know, you're a freshman coming into Madison Square Garden. Look draw. at this cut. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Moody gets the basket. Moody on the money with the pass. 13-12, Western Kentucky with 13-14 to play in the half. Here it is. Uh, alert, looking for one another. You can see the explosion to the basketball by Alexander. Left side off the fake. McNeil wants to work it inside, having problems working it inside. Good collapsing defense by the Tigers. A gut play by Will Fong. Here comes Askew. Taking it all the way. Good help by Frank. Alexander has it rejected. Oh, man. Western Kentucky really forcing it in deep on offense. Clarence Martin with an excellent rejection. Here's Martin looking for the open man. He finds him, but it doesn't go down. The follow, it doesn't go down again by Tellus Frank. I guess they're going to give it to Gray. Frank following his own. Ray Swagger comes in the game for Western Kentucky, number 30. Senior, 6'3", 195. Martin goes out, so Western Kentucky going with a smaller lineup. Well, that's what Murray Arnold said at the press conference. They can be very big, or they can go small. They go three small with the two big guys. White boy back in the ball game. Shot is missed by Tellus Frank. Askew takes a little bit of a breather as he sits down. We have a 14-12 Western Kentucky lead. Off court pressure applied by the Hilltoppers, leading to a fast break and moving. Oh, a little help. Oh, he a, little. a little bit of a break from Cody Jody, in, Jody inbounds, play on. Boy, they handle that beautifully. Boy, trying to dish it off inside to Alexander. Knocked out of bounds by Alexander. It'll be Western ball. The next time Western presses like that, you'll notice they want the ball back to Alexander and make him dribble the ball. That time he passed it, it really ruined the press of Western Kentucky. There's Swagger. Pretty cut down the lane. Basket does not go by Frank, but here he is. Johnson oh, knocking it home. Okay. Kennard Johnson. 16-12 Western Kentucky. Boyd, great pretty passing. pass inside. To Clarence Martin. White Boyd with a bailout, nevertheless effective. Still a 2-2-1. Alexander now. Marvin Alexander has four field goals for eight points, but Western Kentucky has the lead, 16-14. We have 11.36 remaining. First half, the winner plays Nevada Las Vegas tomorrow night.
started back in 1912. How did Memphis State get the nickname the Tigers? They were called the normal school back then. But all of a sudden, there was a pep rally that went on on campus, and everyone started waving banners and flying around exuberantly, and they shouted a new nickname. We fight like Tigers. And ever since then, it's been exactly like that. Memphis State Tigers. Do you agree, Mr. Tiger? Let's go back to Howard. <laughs> Bruce. Now you can see who Bruce is taking to dinner after the game. It's going to be a push-off on Tellus Frank. But I'm enjoying the physical nature of this game. I mean, big bodies, not dirty, just presence. Tough physical, physical game. presence. A lot of board crashing. A lot. We saw a lot of that in the first game. Temple and Nevada, Las Vegas. You just tuned in. Nevada, Las Vegas, posting a two-point win in a thriller. Gerald Patio with a bucket at the buzzer. Alexander. Good high-low screen. Alexander on the comeback and a foul inside. By Dwight Boyd with a beautiful screen, a back screen, set up the sequence. Clarence Martin comes back in the game. His first personal foul, a home tackle of 16 fouls. Sixteen fifteen, Western Kentucky. Alexander's second free throw ties it at sixteen apiece. Pretty well schooled, though. The picks, the cuts. Memphis State not as tall up front, but drilled and really handling the man-to-man -man pressure of Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers going with a fairly small lineup with Swagger in the game now. This is Swagger thirty, guarded by Will Fong. Clarence Martin doesn't go. And Alexander making his presence felt. Between Martin and Alexander, you fill up a lot of that lane easily. Askew doesn't go. Here's McNeil. Doesn't want to get into a fast break. Brings it up with good pace. And Memphis State without Askew. Hanging tough. Swagger over Askew, doesn't go. And Sylvester Gray with the rebound. He can start nailing some of these for that club. Askew gets on the board. Memphis State could be in good shape. 10.09 remaining first half. We are tied at 16. Western Kentucky and Memphis State. Howard David and Bill Raftery at Madison Square Garden as Alexander's jumper doesn't go. Both teams very cold right now. Gray slipping down. From the left side, the jumper does not go. And Will Fong gets the roll. Will Funk trying to pick up the pace a little bit. Should be a double tick. Trying to hit Askew on the pick. The double tick as you called it. So seen by Jody Sylvester and it's going to be Western ball. As Sidney Atkins comes into the game, a 6'4 guard, sophomore from Memphis, replacing John Wilfong. And Dwayne Bailey, a 6'9 junior, also from Memphis, comes into the game. And he's happy that Bedford is not here. <laughs> yes, Bedford he is. Out. Rehabilitating in Phoenix. That knee. Chris Phoenix can't wait to get him back. Marvin Alexander sits down for Memphis State. Here's McNeil on the right side. We are tied at 16. McNeil to the basket and a beautiful move. Great use of the dribble. An 18-16 Western lead with 9.14 remaining in the first half. Atkins has just come into the game. Now Boyd. Dwight Boyd guarded by McNeil. Askew guarded by Swagger. Atkins shadowed by McNary. Bailey's shot is deflected, or his pass was, and here come the Hilltoppers. Two on two. No trouble with the dribble. Yep. McNary losing the handle. Can't blame that on the boards. Remember the old garden? The ball wouldn't come back up. Different spots were dead. Kirk Lee is in the game. There he is, number 11, who's just come in for Western Kentucky. Sophomore. Played at Dunbar High School in Baltimore under Bob Wade. Bob Wade, of course, now the head coach at Maryland. Look at Martin and Bailey. Here's Martin strong in the basket. You're going to score that goal, a goaltending charge on Sylvester Gray. Does he get up in the air for a man of his hope? Could have let that go, but wants to get in the flow a little bit. Sylvester Gray, just a freshman, led his high school team to back-to-back -back state championships. 
Larry Finch getting a lot of players in the game. Good control by Boyd. And we're going to get a foul underneath. It's going to be on Douglas, I believe. Just a guess. I saw him with Ray Swagger. Rodney Douglas gets hit with a personal foul. Western Kentucky now, as you get a look at the shooting, neither team having a sterling first half thus far. 16 fouls for Western Kentucky, five for Memphis State. Johnson, nice flat pass into McNeil, too hard. Johnson playing volleyball. Oh, oh. It he goes and a foul, but wait a minute, does it count? Oh, they're gonna call it on him. I thought he, of course, we can't see what happened underneath. He was active, went up three times. Must have been leaning on somebody. Kennard Johnson does not get credit for the field goal. It remains a 20 to 16 game. You like this pass. I enjoyed it as oh, yeah. well. Catchable, nice. soft. McNeil, a little harsh. The tip. Let's see if he uses anybody. Ooh. I don't know. Kennard was looking for three. He got a goose egg. <laughs> a six point turnaround. Oh, <laughs> the three you had and the three you didn't get. Larry Finch in his first year after seven years as an assistant coach at Memphis State. Once played for Butch Van Bredekoff in the old ABA with the Memphis Tams. Because Butch was not what you consider to be the quietest of bench coaches. And still coaching. Now is he coaching at Lafayette? Yes, he is. Douglas again with a lean in. Of course, Butch, a character of sorts. But nobody can question his coaching ability. Oh, no. One of the best around. Still is. Vincent Askew, number 30. And Kenneth Moody, 32 in the game for Memphis State. And for Western Kentucky, Brian Asbury, a senior, 6'6 six, six and a half, 240. There are some husky young men out there on the floor right now. They have to pay extra when they fly. <laughs> Big table, 2-3 zone now by Memphis State. Held toppers in front by four. Working around a swagger. Long range jumper is good. It is not a three pointer, but it is good. And Kirk Lee with the bucket. They handled it beautifully. Esbury with the kick to the top of the key. Six point Western lead with 7.35 remaining until the end of the first half. This is Moody. Both teams using a lot of people. And although this is the semifinals of the. Good cut again. Moody double team outside the Boyd. Nice hang jumper. 22-18, although this is a preseason tournament, it is developing into the most prestigious college basketball tournament, other than, of course, the Final Four. Of course, you but get you, some heavy competition early. Oh, well, you do. You it helps tested. clubs down the end. Will Fong with good defense helping out on the 2-1-2. McNeil with the dish on the turnaround. Martin couldn't make it go down, and Swagger with the save. Tried to force that one in, didn't he? Didn't release it until late. Well, he takes up some area in there. Byron Smart. Way off the mark by Brian Asbury, and a foul is going to be called on Asbury. Missed the shot and then gets called for the foul. Started to talk about, as you look at uh, Murray Arnold, the head coach at Western Kentucky in his first season. Last year was the assistant with the Chicago Bulls. The interesting thing, about this tournament. Last year, of course, three of the final four teams in March came right out of this tournament. Larry Finch would like to see his team in the postseason this year, but he won't for the next two years. They're on probation for the next two years. So this essentially is their NCAA tournament. And of course, both coaches new to a program, and Murray Arnold came in, replaced Clem Haskins. Usually players leave. He handled himself so beautifully, and all the players love Clem that they all stayed, and of course, listening to him, he respects the heck out of Clem, and of course, Larry Finch replacing Dana Kirk, and we'll get into that before too long, I'm sure. 6.38 remaining first half, Western Kentucky up by a field goal. <laughs> Memphis State and Western Kentucky in the second semifinal game. Here's how they got here. Memphis State's Tigers beat last year's Cinderella team in the tournament, 70-66, and a very good Michigan team was Jobert and Company, 82-76. Of course, Western beat Notre Dame and TCU. Notre Dame 
will probably be a lot better when David Rivers becomes 100%. Mm -hmm. And getting back to my third right? Finch comes in and he recruited all these kids. Right. First, they liked him when he recruited them. They enjoyed playing for him. And Asbury again. Asbury having tough luck. Can't make it go down. McNeil, very active, kisses it home. He's been impressive. Outside with the dribble. So the jumper by McNeil gives Western Kentucky a four-point lead with six minutes remaining in the first half. Western now in a 1-3-1. Will Fong with room. A three-point field goal and makes it 24-23. That the first three-point field goal of this ball game, I believe it is. There were a bevy of them in the second half of that first game. Both teams look like power-oriented teams, trying to get Memphis State the cuts inside, and of course, Western Kentucky jamming everything up, and to get the big guys in, you gotta pop some jump shots. You know, it's gonna be a tough night for those big people in Western Kentucky. Kirk Lee, Brett McNeil, Roy Swagger, essentially three guards, Clarence Martin, and Brian Asbury. Starting for five right here for Western Kentucky. But he got away with Asbury, a walk. Asbury this time makes it count. He did get away with a walk, I think. 26-23. Alexander banks it home. Alexander with 12 points. Roy Swagger has room, and he cans it. And that'll help the inside game. Martin, Asbury inside. 28-25, Western Kentucky with 4.50 to play in the first half. The winner of this game meets Nevada-Las Vegas in tomorrow's final. Be with us at 9 o'clock Eastern time for the championship game of the Coca-Cola NIT. Western Kentucky handling the cuts a little bit better. Pot was missed. And Martin with the rebound. Try to take the ball away from Clarence Martin. You got a <laughs> tough road ahead of you. He's 6 8 2 and a quarter. Slim chance. Yeah, slim and none. And slim lives in Texas. Asbury got caught in the air, but dishes it off, and a foul is going to be called. Boy, up boy. Yeah, Dwight Boyd trying to reach in. Asbury with a sigh of relief. He was strung out, nothing to do, found Martin underneath. Sylvester Gray checks back into the game for Memphis State. Boyd sits down. Murray Arnold for 15 years has been in college basketball coaching, his first season as the head man at Western Kentucky. But in his career between Tennessee, Chattanooga, and Birmingham Southern, he won 71% of his games. Because he was telling you earlier, he started down with Morgan Wooten at Morgan the Panther, right? Yeah, was a successful was a high school program. Last year, a year with the Bulls, uh, Chris Michael Jordan, early, hurt, and then got him back in the playoffs. He really enjoyed the relationship, and he loved the pro game, too. So he learned a lot. Chris working with Stan Albeck. Got a chance to see the other side of things. Clarence Martin's two free throws gives Western Kentucky a five-point lead with 4.05 remaining until halftime. This is Askew. The jumper does not go. Shooting has not been superb in this first half. Here's Wilfong in traffic trying to weave his way through. It'll not go, but he's going to get two chances to go to the line. <laughs> Clarence Martin smiling. I don't know if they got him or not. <laughs> I guess they did. Oh, Will Fong went in quickly and came out faster when hit by Clarence Martin. Larry Finch probably took one look at his schedule this year and said, you know, who made this up? A sadist? He's got like the 11th toughest schedule in America this year. But that had to be tough down there with all the problems that they had. Oh. Rules violation, of course, Dana Kirk with his own personal situation and Memphis State trying to fight their way through it. Memphis State still got to play Nevada Las Vegas. If they win tonight, they'll play him tomorrow night and then they're going to play him again on December the 5th. It'll be a week from tonight. 
in Memphis, Tennessee. But here's where it's happening in the first half. Western Kentucky leads by four. Western Kentucky had a go with a new head coach this year, Murray Arnold. Clem Haskins went on to University of Minnesota and was an absolutely terrifically successful coach at the Hilltop. Uh, they loved him, too. I mean, it was a, a nice feeling amongst the team. And, of course, when you walk into a situation like that, as Murray Arnold did, what you don't want to do is upset it. It takes a unusual person, a guy that uh, doesn't take himself too seriously, understands the situation. Of course, Larry Finch just, he's seen enough, though, to be ready for the grill there. Absolutely. Kirk Lee, number 11, bringing it up against Askew. It's a swagger. McNeil calling for the ball, and he's not getting it. Here's Martin. Now finds McNeil, wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. One on one with Askew behind the screen, the jumper, and a pretty one. Now you know why he wanted the ball. He's impressive. He got out of the three second lane quickly. Got ten, back out and got the ball. Ten points for McNeil, 32 26. Western Kentucky in front of Memphis State. Inside pass to Sylvester Gray, trying to find some room. Dishes it out to Alexander. Here's John Wolfong. Inside to Alexander. Strong move to the basket, and a foul is going to be called against Asbury, I believe. We're being redundant saying strong move because yeah. every move by these big guys is a strong move. That's a third foul on Clarence Martin. And Kennard Johnson comes back into the game for Western Kentucky. Martin sits down with still 2.53 to play in the half. Murray Arnold's team in front by six. By virtue of his body, Clarence Martin gets some fouls. The one on Wilfong, for example, people just bounce off that body. Alexander with a big night against the Wolverines of Michigan in an earlier NIT game. He closes the lead to five. They get a four-point game, 32-28. Western Kentucky in front. 2-2-1, two -two which has been on, a, on again, off again for Memphis State. Really a passive type of zone. McNeil with a quick pull-up. This one doesn't go down, and Sylvester Gray tracks it down. Here comes Wilfong up the floor. Askew wants to work it inside to Gray and reaching over the top. Gonna get a foul on Brian Asbury. He believed he was way ahead. This held on. Pretty good post defense by the Hilltoppers. Good position. Deny the cuts. Don't let you get to the ball. Memphis State, which has been pretty much an offensive-minded program. Larry Finch came in, said he wants to stress more defense. Now that he's uh, the man at the top, been an assist assistant at Memphis State for seven years. Players always love to hear that, too. Yeah. For the coach comes in. That's right. It means we're going to work harder, coach, right? Well, they like the that. guy to come in and say, look, we're going to run, take wild shots. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to take away your personality. And that guy's usually out of a job quickly. <laughs> Marvin Alexander at 21 against Michigan. Misses the second one, and Asbury goes up nicely for the rebound. Three-point lead for the Hilltoppers over the Tigers of Memphis State. Still 2.23 to play in the half. The winner plays Nevada Las Vegas tomorrow night in the championship game. We'll have it for you at 9 Eastern. The one field three-point field goal attempt in this half. Asbury on the turnaround. Found his range. Get down on the box, big fella. Minute and 58 to play in the half. Five-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Moody on the turnaround. It doesn't go, and Asbury with a rebound. Strong. Up, up big. McNeil, nice inside pass to Kennard Johnson, and he is fouled from behind by Alexander. Marvin Alexander commits the foul. That is only his first. As we get substitutions coming into the game, Dwight Boyd from Memphis State. And Fred Tisdale, the junior, comes into the game. Kadar Johnson actually lost the handle before the contact. Could have really let them play. You going somewhere? I'm just standing up for a second. <laughs> Stretch it out.
Free throw is good by Johnson to give Western Kentucky a six-point lead. One of the concerns of Murray Arnold was the foul situation. Tell us Frank with two, and of course, the big man who I think is very impressive, Clarence Martin with three, so you may not see Frank until the second half. Sylvester so DeGray with a very, very powerful rebound. Gray has yet to score in this game, and you're waiting for him to break out any minute. Askew way outside, guarded by McNeil. With a minute and 20 to play, Western up by six. Gray with room. Doesn't get it, but Wilfong gets the rebound. Right back up with it. it could have been offensive goaltending from our end. Yeah, it must have been off. Larry Limbaugh let it go, but Gray sort of hovering up there. Six-point lead for Western with a minute and two to play until halftime. McNeil has had a good first half. McNeil has 10 thus far in the game. 22 on the shot clock. Reaching over foul by John Wilfong. So tempting when you see the ball <laughs> sitting out there. It's just sitting there and you say, oh, I can get that. Bang, foul. Second foul against John Wilfong. Memphis State, good positionally on defense. They're trying to force everything in Western Kentucky, and they're taking away the cuts and post position. They do a lot of power screening away. And Memphis State, pretty sound inside. Kennard Johnson came into this game with exactly 1,200 career points. He has five thus far tonight. He still has five. One of 26 players in Western history to score over 1,000. They lead it by six with 39 seconds to play. 36 on the shot clock. We'll see if they milk the clock. They'll try to put it up in a hurry. Alexander off the cut inside and a foul reaching over the top. Kennard Johnson. That is his third foul. So inside, right, they've got eight fouls with the starters. Fred Tisdale now checks into the game and Kennard Johnson sits down. Sylvester Gray to the free throw line with a one on one opportunity. The game has not gotten into, so far we haven't like seen any character of this game developing yet. Not like the last game where in the second half it all happened. A little bit of a slugfest, I think, underneath <laughs> all the wide bodies. It seemed we meant to stay. Put a guy in the high post. They got the cuts and opened up the back line a little bit. Mm -hmm. Lately, they've been posting on each box, sort of jamming things up. 35-31, Western in front with 26 seconds to play until halftime. Obviously, the shot clock comes off, and then Western will work it for one last shot. And you got to believe McNeil's the man to take the last shot, unless they work it inside. McNeil has been the man with the hot hand. Or Swagger here, too, with the ball. Both of them will look for it more than the others with eight seconds to go here's mcneil he's got a step nice dish good block inside with one they'll not be a shot that's one where mcneil should have shot it good defensive play by memphis state down the stretch western kentucky does take the lead at halftime 35 to 31 our halftime festivities from madison square garden coming your way in just a moment Halftime at Madison Square Garden in Western Kentucky leads Memphis State by a score of 35 to 31. Memphis State has been scandalized over the past year. Last May, the NCAA placed the Tigers football and basketball teams on two-year probation for recruiting violations. And following Dana Kirk's dismissal as head coach of the basketball team, he was indicted by a federal grand jury on charges of obstruction of justice, tax evasion, and mail fraud. To talk more about the Memphis State situation, with me is Charles Cavagnero, the athletic director at Memphis State. How do you build the program now? How do you pick up the pieces? Well, we don't think that it's a matter of picking up the pieces, Bruce. We feel like we've got a good, solid foundation for a program, and it's one that we're going to build on and grow with, and we feel very comfortable and confident that we're going to do that. 
Do you need to recapture the integrity of the institution, both from an academic and athletic standpoint? I feel as though we've had the, the uh, integrity issue is one that's been solved. We think it's had no problem. As far as the athletic aspect, we have to just get together, which we've done for the last six months, and continue to put our best foot forward and do the best we can on the floor and in the classroom with our student athletes. And we feel very comfortable that we're doing just that. By signing Larry Finch as head coach, is that a step in the right direction? Well, certainly we don't think we would have done it. But Larry, Larry brings an enormous amount of integrity himself to our program. Larry is a young man, of course, was born and raised in Memphis. He's a high school All-American in Memphis. He's an All-American at Memphis State. And he's been an assistant coach for eight years. He knows Memphis, and we feel as though Memphis knows Larry. And so far, so good, because he's done a great job of bringing the kids together and keeping them on the floor, putting all of it out of their mind, getting them to play basketball and go to the school, and that's what they're there for. Statistics reveal that during Dana Kirk's tenure at the school, only 15% of the athletes that played for him graduated. What about those numbers? Well, those are numbers that we're not uh, certainly not proud of. We hope to do a better job, but it's not, I want to say this, it's not just Coach Kirk. Or he inherited a basketball team in transition. He inherited a basketball team that was floundering. So that when you're adding up statistics, as with a bookkeeper, you can make statistics do whatever you want to with them. We feel as though we've got a commitment to graduate our young men. In the last uh, three years, we've tripled the size of our academic advising staff. We now have full-time, a full-time person for nothing but basketball, full-time for nothing but football, full-time for our other sports. We feel as though that's the way you attack the problem, given the facilities and the wherewithal to, to compete not only in, on the floor, but also in the classroom, and we feel very comfortable about that. The roar you hear in the background is for the Memphis State Pom Pom Girls, who three out of four years went to the national champions championship, and it's uh, something I know Memphis State is very proud of to change the topic for a moment. Yes, the uh, the Pom Pom Girls are really an institution in Memphis, uh, a lot like our basketball team. I, I've often said if we could get our basketball and football and other teams to practice and compete as hard as our Pom Poms, we may not ever lose a game because they're really something. Final question, is Memphis State on the right track right now? Do you think that you're really going to rebuild this program well? Oh, very, there's no doubt about it. It's too good a program and has been too good a program in the past not to, not to get there again. And we feel like we've, we've taken a major step forward, not only with Coach Finch, but with our new football coach, Charlie Bailey. Both are committed to the student-athlete aspect. They both put the student back in student-athlete. And we just have to do the recruiting in Memphis, fill in what we need from afar in both sports, and we'll be no problem. We'll stay. Basketball is still there, and football is clawing and fighting to try to get just there. Charles Cavagnero, who is the athletic director at Memphis State University. Here at the Garden, the fans are chanting for We Want More from the Pom Pom Girls. Western Kentucky leads it at halftime. Western Kentucky leads it by four at halftime, but we're going to pass on the highlights right now and on the recap because we're going to talk a little bit to the Memphis State, the award-winning Memphis State pom-pom girl. Let's start with the coach, first of all. What's your name? Sherry Ganon. How long have the girls been working together? Uh, this year, we started in August, so it's been about three and a half months, every day. What kind of discipline is involved in getting the routines together? Well, we're on a conditioning program. They work out with weights. They run every day, uh, three, four miles, plus we practice three to four hours, six days a week. You've performed in a lot of places. How about Madison Square Garden? What do you think? Oh, we love it here. That's why we did so good tonight. <laughs> when you get a crowd reaction like you did a moment ago, what would you think? It makes us feel great. We love it. We want to do it again. Can we do it again? <laughs> All right. The Memphis State Pom Pom Girls ladies, thank you very much for stopping by. We'll be back with more from the Garden with Western Kentucky leading it by four. Yes, college basketball is something special. Well, the winner of this ball game will take on the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for the Coca-Cola NIT Classic Championship. That will happen tomorrow. Western Kentucky has led throughout this ball game. They jumped out to a 9-4 bulge in the early going, and they kept a four or six point lead throughout much of the first half until the game was tied at 16 on a nice run by Memphis State, but here at the half, Western Kentucky leads it by four. Scoring leaders, first of all for Memphis State, Alexander doing it inside and outside, 15 points in the first half. Moody with six, two from the free throw line, and Boyd and Wolfong each with four points. For Western Kentucky, Martin had 11, McNeil had 10 points, and that was pretty much all the scoring for Western Kentucky in the first half of play. The big story on the boards, Western Kentucky 21 to 13 over Memphis State, and it's reflected in the score with the Hilltoppers leading by four.
Back with highlights at the Garden in just a moment. Back at Madison Square Garden in New York, there you see your halftime score. This is the second semifinal game of the Coca-Cola National Invitation Tournament, a preseason tournament that is really starting to open up everybody's eyes in college basketball. Last year, the four finalists in this tournament were Duke, Louisville, Kansas, and St. John's. Of course, three of those went to the NCAA Final Four in March. I'm not sure if any of these teams will make it to the Final Four, although UNLV, picked by many, maybe to get that far, did not look all that sharp tonight. Second game, Memphis State, Western Kentucky. Vincent Askew from Memphis State averages 17 and a half a game. He has not scored. Zippo. And could you imagine where they would be if he could start perking a little bit? Uh, I'm impressed with Western Kentucky, however. I think at the end of the year, they may be there. They've got the big people. They have been fouling a little bit. Early games, they got in trouble. Tonight, the whole front line in trouble. You know, you figured Jan Johnson picked them up late. Kennard Johnson, one that maybe he shouldn't have had. Of course, Martin with that big body, he's going to come up with them. And saving Tellus Frank, he only has the two. But Western Kentucky has not pressed yet. They call a big man press where they put Martin on the basketball and create some havoc. Mm -hmm. They haven't gotten into a lot of things, and I think that's out of respect for Memphis State. They're solid in the backcourt. Western, a big front line, 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", across the front. Let's look at the highlights of the first half. Western Kentucky in front by the score of 35 to 31. First half uh, highlight right here. Uh, tell us Frank there, of course, with the soft touch, enabling Kennard Johnson to bang in. Here's what they kept doing, the power basketball, and oh, it's a wonder they didn't put up a new backboard. Clarence Smart, very strong, and I thought Memphis State got the ball inside very well there. Rejection by the front line, good cut again, something that Memphis State did well early. They cleared out the back, and Boyd teed it up there. Of course, good guards, I think. They've got three of them, and this is Will Fon. Yep, wins uh, nephew, I guess it is. Of course, inside, both teams with power. The big back side there of Marvin Alexander. Of course, when Will Fong had an outstanding career at Memphis State. Here are the statistics of the first half. You can see the shooting has not been all that great. Western Kentucky, not too bad. They've taken nine more shots from the line. Memphis State has outshot Western Kentucky from the line. But look at the rebound differential. And that kind of dictates uh, what has happened here in the first half. Western Kentucky way out in front with that big front line. Of course, there, it's interesting to see the type of basketball that's played in different sections of the country. Uh, the power game right now, you know, Western Kentucky used to be what you might call a run and shoot kind of a team. This is going back to the diddle days. But now, good power basketball inside. Memphis State with that a little bit like the Louisville cuts off the high post. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoy the variant types, but one thing, don't turn the ball over and rebound, and you got your shot at winning games. The winner of this game will play UNLV in tomorrow's championship final. Western Kentucky is in front at the moment, 35 to 31, but 20 more minutes of basketball still coming your way. Twenty minutes of basketball remaining in the second semifinal game. The winner to play the running Rebels from Nevada, Las Vegas, who won by two is Will Fong in the breakaway. The basket counts and he's fouled by Kennard Johnson. Memphis State coming out in a rush in the first three seconds of the second half. Well, they were pressed and they didn't have a safety valve. And right away, a quick substitution because of the fourth foul to Kennard Johnson. Ryan Asbury comes into the ball game for Western Kentucky and John Wilfong with a three-point play opportunity to get the Memphis State Tigers within one. That proves you have to be ready at the get-go. Boy, you're not kidding. 35-34 Western. Three seconds, three points. It's a way to get back in the game in a hurry. No pressure now. Swagger, McNary, McNeil. Tell us Frank and Brian Asbury. The starting lineup in the second half for Weston. Here's Asbury, has it blocked by Sylvester Gray. And a foul is going to be called. 
because again, the uh, the early points, the pressure by Memphis State, you enjoy seeing coaches change some things, come out differently. Of course, Boyd with the foul, Asbury Second going strong time. to the goal, yeah. Of course, inside, he made a little turnaround down here in the first half. I don't think he's a deep shooter. <laughs> now, he may prove me wrong, but inside, he looks awfully tough. Tough and huge. Asbury's free throw is no good. He's 6'6 six, six and a half, 240. Western more of a veteran team than Memphis State. Memphis State has two seniors on their roster. Second free throw is also missed. Will Fong and Moody, the only seniors. And here comes Western. Uh, Memphis State pushing it up the floor. They can take the lead with a bucket here. Askew, who's been absolutely quiet. That's right. If he gets perky. Good cut by Alexander. Boyd with the baseline jumper. Memphis State takes the lead, 36-35. I must commend Askew, though. He hasn't looked to force. He's had opportunities that have been taken away. He just relaxes. Smart. McNeil with 10 first-half points, and Swagger's jumper is off the mark. A rebound to Martin. Oh, double dribble, and the referees didn't see it. Went right by him. They didn't have enough officials. <laughs> Let's go from three to six. Inside pass to Alexander, stripped away by McNeil. It's a three on two, but McNeil doesn't run it up the floor. Swagger moves it around to McNeary. Neal almost had it taken away and right up with the lefty pot. Doesn't go down. Almost a good play by Askew underneath. Oh, basket does not go. Body check. Tell us Frank. And that brings uh, Larry Finch up off the bench from Memphis State. Body check by Alexander. James McNerney, who you didn't hear much from, because he didn't play much in that first half. With a good, quick pass after the slap back. Dallas Frank on the line. Two shots. Dallas Frank's free throw ties it at 36. Western regains the lead by a point with 18.25 to play in the second half. John Wolfong with a left-handed dribble. This is Vincent Askew. Right here, 30. Wolfong. And Step. Sylvester Gray did a little shuffle off to Memphis. And the turnover will give Western Kentucky the ball. Years ago, they used to call it Gardenitis. First time a player would come in and have a bad ball game. Sylvester Gray not comfortable so far maybe tomorrow night you know it's interesting even to this day of big money bigger arenas bigger attendance boy there are a lot Doesn't of people down right now a lot of people could get in the construction business oh yeah what a nice dish and a slam great Three play luck. by mcneil and the layoff to tell us frank Started to say, even in this day of more money and bigger arenas, bigger attendance and all of that, national television exposure, still when you come into the garden, the jitters set in. Certain feeling. Askew wants his first points and he gets it. Comfortable. Just gave the fist to the bench. Little 2-2-1. Two, two, Swagger breaks the pressure. Same thing happened in that first game, as you recall. Good pressure by Memphis State. Frank wants the ball. McNary with a little push. 41-38 Western. Three minutes into the second half. It's Western Kentucky fortunate that Memphis State is small because they can go with this three-guard set. White Boyd looking to work it inside. Wants to go to Sylvester Gray. They're giving him the jump shot, but he doesn't want it. Askew was free and they missed him. Here's Askew. In three-point range, brings it inside for the soft jumper. He's two for two. If Askew gets hot, Western's in trouble. Because he can fill it up in a hurry. Askew had 20 against Cleveland State, 15 against Michigan. 10 seconds. And a 10-second violation. They did not get it across midcourt. And that was a passive 2-2-1. Two, two, Western Kentucky not looking ahead, bouncing the ball. It will kill you. Oh 
Alexander to trigger the inbound. Marvin Alexander, 6'7", 235, with the body of a tight end. A one-point lead for Western Kentucky with 16.05 remaining. Eskew's looking more for the basketball and for himself. Well, you know what it is. It's confidence. He hit his two jumpers in a row. Will Fong doesn't get it to go down. Last touch by Memphis with 15.52 remaining. Until the end of the second half, Western Kentucky leading by one point. Larry Finch played on the Memphis State Tiger team that lost to UCLA in the 1973 championship finals. Murray Arnold, once upon a time, played for Billy Packer's father at Lehigh. In spite of that, he became a good coach. <laughs> oh, of course, Tony Packer, who coached Lehigh when I was at LaSalle. McNeary gets the roll. I didn't mean that as a shot towards Billy's father. <laughs> <laughs> at Billy, obviously. 43-40 Western Kentucky with 15 and a half to play. Well, with everything jammed up inside, the jump shot, or if he can turn the corner and create something, McNary's done it twice now. Askew with a nice pass oh. to Gray. <laughs> Excellent lean in. Little Sylvester Gray off Askew's pass. That's a little tug of the legs. Keep you up a little longer. One point lead for Western with 15-10 remaining. Tell us Frank finally gets it loose. Here's Swagger with room. Gotta Can't hit it. Got to make that. Bad trajectory. Too much of a line drive on that shot. Here comes Wilfong. Askew wants to put it up. He does. He's hit three in a row. His eyes are seeing the light. <laughs> Mostly he's into it a little bit. Tell us Frank. Ooh. A little bit between the leg move. Nice move. Tell us Frank. Right back at you. 6'10". It's a no-no. Because he only played nine minutes in the first half. Because Telus Frank has played about four different positions for this Western team. Frank now with nine points, eight in this half. I always got guys six, eight, six, nine who wanted to be guards. Good follow. Good follow by Sylvester Gray. The book on Gray was that watch him. He's going to be something. You can see he's taking more and more control as he gets more and more confident. Or he impressed Kevin Mackey at Cleveland State some quotes about Gray by Kevin. Swagger goes out of the game, replaced by Roland Shelton, 6'4 freshman, wearing number 20. He's fronting Askew right now because Askew has been getting a little bit too cozy for Murray Arnold's sake, and he wants to get somebody to shut him down a little bit. They almost had the alley oop. They have seen Gray lurking. Western up by a point with 14 minutes remaining. Wilfong taking some time off the clock, looking to set it up for the good shot. They're looking for Askew. Here's Wilfong. Has it stripped away by McNary. He thought he had all ball. Jody Sylvester and Larry Limbo said, no, you didn't. Of course, he got the ball a little deeper earlier. As he went to the bench, Coach Finch hollered at Wilfong for the long jumper. Wilfong begging a little bit. And of course, he got ball, but he got a little extra. John Wilfong, another of the Memphis State players from Memphis, Tennessee. He'll go to the line for two shots. Look at the impact Dean Smith's had on the game. You see the little team meeting at the foul line? You think that's where it's from? Oh, yeah, he started that. I wish I could get my players to talk to one of them that long. <laughs> if they did, they were paying attention, he'd still be there. Let's think of all the positives. Of course, I think the clock is due to him, too, the four corners. Yeah. Memphis State up by a point with 13.50 remaining. The winner to play Nevada Las Vegas tomorrow night at 9 Eastern, and we'll have it for you. Howard David and Bill Raftery here at Madison Square Garden. Memphis State up by a point, 46-45, second semifinal game of the NIT tournament. Rejection by Sylvester Gray. Wonderful move. Excellent move. Negated. Gray, the other end of the floor for the basket. Wolfong right on the money with the pass. Memphis State's biggest lead, three points. Boy, does shot blocking help ignite you, doesn't it? Tell us Frank to the basket. Nice move. He was going back. A lot of guys would hesitate. 
Frank at 17 against Notre Dame, 25 against TCU in the two previous NIT games. Memphis State up by one, 48-47. We have 12.53 remaining. They go to the man in the middle. Alexander doesn't fall, but Sylvester Gray. Gray is there for the knock at home. And Martin with both hands up, ready to snare it. Gray quicker to the basketball. Press has got them going a little bit. Tellus Frank tries to jam it inside. They shut it down. Bucket from the corner by Ronald Shelton. That is his first points of the night. 50-49, Memphis State. Tempo's opened up a little, a little looser. Almost to seeing a mirror image of the first game when the same thing occurred. Game turned completely around in that one. Tempo up by as many as 12. Alexander has it taken away. Shelton had his hand on it. The McNary saves it. McNary right down the floor. Wants McNeil with the lefty corner jumper over the top of the backboard. And it will be Memphis State ball with exactly 12 minutes remaining. In the second half, Memphis State's Tigers lead Western Kentucky's Hilltoppers by one point. The red towel has become synonymous with Western Kentucky basketball. It originated with the great coach Ed Diddle who won over 750 games in his career at Western Kentucky. During ball games, Diddle used to chew on the towel. He used to wave the towel. He used to shout instructions to his players. One day, Diddle gave this red towel away to a player from LaSalle named Joe Carey. It was because Carey played a brilliant ball game. There was another player in that LaSalle team. His name was Bill Raftery, and he'll finish the story. I picked up the towels after the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe Carey, by the way, yeah. we played Diddle. Of course, our coach was Duty Moore. It was the first towel he had ever given to a black athlete. In the middle 60s. Now, I don't want to age myself, but Joe played so well, he was so impressed. And, of course, in those early days, it was unusual for Ed Diddle in the South to run yep. against a black athlete. Interesting. Interesting. Well done, Bruce. Thank you. 50-49. Memphis State in front with 11.50 remaining. Boyd is checked back into the game. Good hands. Bad pass technique. Weston now brings the big gun back into the ball game. Clarence Martin. And Kenneth Moody with an untimely turnover. you got to fake that man. McNeary, Shelton. They want to work it inside to Martin or tell us Frank they're going with twin towers underneath. McNeary from long range, hits the jump shot. Actually, it's not long range, it's medium range. Now Clarence Martin's posting up. We'll try and take a look later. He makes himself actually five to six inches smaller. He bends down so low. Shooting much better in the second half, particularly Memphis State as Alexander bangs it home. Those are high percentage shots. Well, of course, he cleared his man out and once again, we'll find finding him. At the state up by a point as the lead changes hands again with 10.50 remaining. Good caliber of basketball both games. Martin with a very strong move to the basket. Get that ball on the baseline when the man's topside. Right back again and Moody. Good call. He's going to go to the line as Shelton's called for a blocking foul. Larry Limbo right on it. Still moving his feet. Larry Lumbo, a pretty fair player in his days at Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Good player. Saw him once uh, last during last season and asked him if he still had any eligibility left because Manhattan could use him. Oh, they were struggling last year. Yes, they were. Nice dish inside. Excellent. Alexander has it stolen by McNeary. It's four on two. McNeary by himself. The tip doesn't go, and Memphis State is going to go to the free throw line. Kenneth Moody will go to the line because Tellus Frank got him over the top. A four-on-two break, and they come up empty. That's the second cheap foul by Tellus Frank. McNary, everything but good aggressive offensive rebounding. Coming up empty by Western Kentucky. And, of course, the big guy loves to reach in. That's the second silly one for Tellus Frank. That's his third of the game. Mm -hmm. that Western Kentucky now with 14 fouls in this half. Memphis State has two. We have almost half the second half to go and Western Kentucky in front now by a point. 
Askew on the backdoor cut to Boyd. Nice body positioning in the lay-in. Askew did not give up on the cutter. Even though it was a deep pass, he found him. Askew more of a factor now in the second half. And maybe that's what Larry Finch told him at halftime. Said, Vincent, we need you to be more of a factor offensively as well as penetration. Because he was rumored to be going to Kansas. Well, Askew, they need more help. <laughs> he went out there and then I guess changed his mind. McNeil doesn't go, but he'll go to the line. McNeil had 10 first half points. White Boyd beaten by the dribble with the reaching. Brett McNeil only a sophomore. Boyd now has four personal fouls. McNeil was a Mr. Basketball in Minnesota. That's shaken up last Friday in the Notre Dame game. Injured his ankle, but sure playing fine tonight. Sylvester Gray comes back into the ball game for Memphis State. Sylvester comes in. And Boyd goes out. Boyd goes to the bench with four field goals for eight points. McNeil's free throw ties it at 54. Chris, the press got Memphis State going. But in turn, it's opened things up a little bit for Western Kentucky. That's why the flow of the game is a higher pitch. Substitution coming out of the game for Western Kirk Lee, number 11, replaces McNeil, who goes to the bench. Brett McNeil sits down with 12 points. He only has two, though, in this half. Second semifinal game of the preseason National Invitation Tournament. Here at Madison Square Garden, I'm Howard David, along with Bill Raftery and Bruce Beck. Should score the goal, too. Is the basket going to count? Yes. I think it's going to count. Crowley is pointing, but the basket's going to count. He's got two fingers up in the air, and Larry Limbo says, no, it's not. He's saying the foul was on the floor. Ooh, you got to go for three. What a tough call against them. They got the call, but it really went the other way. Three to inbounding. Fifth team foul against Western Kentucky. Askew, Will Fong looking to kick it inside. Sylvester Gray is the guy I think they want to go to inside. Gray or Alexander, they've really been working the boxes and pounding one another. They got a clear for Askew. Clears for Will Fong for the jumper. He's got to make those. Rebound Alexander, the quick pop by Gray, no good, and Alexander almost gets called for a foul, but look who comes out of the pack. Moody on Alexander, and Alexander gets fouled going to the basket. They could give this to Shelton on the crossover. What a move. You know what's happening now, Billy? Memphis State's going with a bigger lineup. Mm -hmm. They want to take it inside, and they figure they can get some, maybe some mismatches because they are a bigger team right now than Western Kentucky. Well, watch the step across here. Pretty inside basketball. Actually, the ball kicked them. I'm not so sure they gave that to Frank or Shelton. Swagger is going to check back into the ball game for Western Kentucky. He comes into the game. McNary goes out. James McNary did not want to come out. But he <laughs> had not? no choice. McNary leaves the game with six points. Alexander gets one for two from the line. And it's a 55 all ball game with 8.37 remaining. Winner to play Nevada Las Vegas. And the running Rebels who beat Temple 78-76 in a thriller. A buzzer beater by Gerald Patio. Memphis yeah. State switching that inside screen. Swagger has it rejected by Moody, but he got a piece in the hand. Weston with another substitution. Kennard Johnson comes back into the ball game. Johnson has four fouls. Clarence Martin sits down. Kennard Johnson back in the game. I think they'll yo-yo them down the stretch, trying to keep them both alive. Murray in foul trouble. But that inside game of Western Kentucky, now it's quiet because they're exchanging. The screen down, one player takes one, the other takes the man who screened. Swagger gives Western a lead by a point. Western Kentucky led by four at the half. Murray Arnold in his 15th season at college basketball coach, his first year at Western Kentucky. And his Hilltoppers have a two-point lead, 57-55.
8.15 remaining, second half. Askew shouting out instructions to Wilfong. They want to get Askew posted up on Swagger. That's what Askew would love to have. Only he's not getting himself into the right position to post himself up. Moody inside to Gray on the turnaround. Well, he can't get and any closer. Frank comes up with the rebound in convincing fashion. High percentage shot. Good try there. Sylvester Gray knocks it out of bounds. As Memphis State will bring Dwight Boyd in the game when we return. We have 7.40 remaining in the second half, and the Hilltoppers lead the Tigers by a bucket. This is the littlest Memphis State fan around. What's your name? Carrie. How old are you? Four and a half. Where are you from? From Memphis. What are you doing in New York? I don't, well, we don't, we don't go, we don't go there. Do you like uh, basketball? Yes. Who's your favorite team? Memphis, Memphis okay. State. Memphis State. We have to go back to court side. Say bye. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> He's trying to look see, good, See, huh? what, what Bruce is trying to do is get back in his wife's good graces, you understand. Yeah, absolutely. After posing with all those gorgeous cheerleaders <laughs> early on from Memphis State, he's now trying to get back, because otherwise he doesn't go home tonight. <laughs> Meanwhile, a zone back at the ranch. by Memphis State. A zone by Memphis State. A little 2-3 right here. One three-point field goal try all night, and it's been made, and that's it. First game, there were several more. Western Kentucky have a little trouble adjusting. Swagger from the baseline. It doesn't go. Excellent rebound by Tellus Frank. And the follow. Western up now by four. Old time philosophy. Shoot the jumper. Let the big guys bang the glass. Memphis State getting a little sloppy there. And Kirk Lee getting a little bit of a showboat move behind the back dribble coming up the floor with nobody on him. Tellus Frank leading in. The basket will not count, however. You say on the floor. Nice NBA move. That would have been three. Yep. In the NBA. Mm -hmm. The left-hand corner beyond Larry Finch is Pete Carlissimo, the executive director of the National Invitation Tournament. Our tip of the hat to Pete and to the entire committee for assembling quite a field for the second year in a row. 6.48 remaining, second half. Western Kentucky leading Memphis State by four. The winner plays Nevada Las Vegas. This guy has done as much for college basketball as anybody in America. Peter A. Carlissimo, his wife Lucy, to his left and camera right. They're each one of 10 children, both Peter and his wife, and they brought up 10 children. Afraid to go home and ask what's new. <laughs> Staying with the zone. Perimeter passing looks like the big guy's high and low. Kennard Johnson along the baseline. The cross court to tell us Frank. He's gotten it going recently and he Ooh. gets another one. Off balance. Good square up. Tell us Frank kind of trying to take charge of this game right now. 61-55 Western leads. Boy. And Tellus Frank with the rebound. Tellus Frank with 15 points in the ball game. Leading scorer is Alexander with 18 for Memphis State. Just a simple thing. He made the dribble move, didn't have it, was going to stump it to the post, and was on his way to an excellent cut. Tellus Vincent Frank. Askew uh, goes into the ball game. He replaces Kenneth Moody, who goes down. Tellus Frank. Inside to Kennard Johnson. Size right now, huh? Six straight points for Western Kentucky. They now lead it by eight. Sylvester Gray answers back. The tempo picks up a little bit with 5.35 remaining in the game. Well, that's deep. Ellis Frank doesn't go. Alexander with a rebound. Here comes Wilfong. 
Nice change of pace dribble and the dish to Boy. Boy, he's made some nice passes. Looked earlier, couldn't get an angle. Delayed, pretty dish. Four point lead for Western as Memphis comes back with two buckets and Murray Arnold said, all right, let's talk this over. I don't like the way this flow is going. We'll hold it here as Murray Arnold wants to take a quick chat with his teammates, with team right now. Murray transferred after he, he was at Lehigh, he went over to American University. Right now shows the best front line of the Sun Belt Conference. Don't forget to uh, stay with Ms. Lou and USA Sports for college football on Saturday, December 20th. The Texas Red Raiders collide with the Ole Miss Rebels in the Independence Bowl from Shreveport. Live coverage will begin at 8 o'clock Eastern then on New Year's Eve afternoon. Join us in Atlanta for the Peach Bowl. The North Carolina State Wolfpack. Wolfpack will play the Virginia Tech Hokies. That will be live at 1 o'clock Eastern. Keep it on USA and Miss Lou TV Sports over the holidays. Tune in for the Independence Ball and the Peach Ball. Speaking of peaches. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> My pal Bob Cassiola will be at the Independence Bowl with yeah. you. We'll be taking a little trip down to Shreveport. The old Princeton coach. Got to get uh, Bob to go over and get him some cowboy boots. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> over at Shreveport. Got to get him fitted with some high steppers. Right now it's become, and Larry Finch is concerned, I'm sure, Good ball movement against the zone and then rebounding against them. So a little change right away off the timeout. Man to man by Memphis State. 5.05 remaining in the game. Or in the second half anyway. Not so sure that it's in the game. It's only a four point game. Swagger on the right side. Good cut by Johnson. And good fake. fake by Johnson. Doesn't go. And it's gonna be Memphis State ball. They can cut it to two. Both clubs are ending up with good shots. Well, Fong draws Lee, now Askew. Kennard Johnson comes out to take him. Askew wants him to clear it out a little bit. Strictly power right now. Boyd, now he wants him to clear it out a little bit, pick it behind the screen. A little too hard. And we're going to get a foul called on Alexander of Memphis State. Finch saw something in the offense he didn't like. He's called Wilfong over to explain it to him. Uh, that's not at exactly what I had in mind. The clear outs. I uh, haven't seen that too much. They opened the side for Askew, but you saw him, as you mentioned, wave out. A little bit of a tough angle for a kiss shot. A little deep. Four-point lead for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky with 4-10 remaining. Second half. Good save. Stellas Frank has called for steps. Hey, Tellus Frank has played so well in this half, so he made one mistake. You can forgive that. He's gotten them to this point where they're up by four. It's only the second turnover in the second half for uh, Western Kentucky. As Dwayne Bailey comes in the game, the junior. Alexander goes to the bench. So they bring in Bailey at 6-9 to replace the 6-7 Marvin Alexander. I think that's just a blow. Saving down the stretch yeah. with four minutes to play. He won't be there too long. This is an important trip down the floor for Memphis State, believe it or not. Askew There's gets the, the roll. That's the clear they ran before. Put it up high enough so the big people couldn't get at it. Askew is now four for four in the second half as James McNary comes into the game. In the backcourt, replacing Kirk Lee. McNary, the ball handler. Western up by a pair with 3.40 to go. Same screen and the step back. Clarence Martin. Tell us Frank. Frank trying to see the lead in, but it was denied. 20 on the shot clock. But Kennard Johnson had asked you, they didn't get it to him. Swagger from the right side. A little too hard, and Will Fong with a rebound. Leads on the left side. The Boyd tries to dish off, but a foul before the pass. Clock stops with 3.13 remaining. Swagger may have saved a basket. Getting back again. I thought Swagger should have dumped the ball into Kennard Johnson, and instead he ends up with a long jump shot. If it's, on, if it's on Johnson, that is his fifth. No, it was on Swagger. It's on Swagger, okay. 
Martin sits down. Clarence Martin sits down for Western Kentucky. And he's replaced by Brett McNeil. McNeil has been down for a long time. Dwight Boyd. Misses the front end and will not get the bonus. See McNeil hold the ball to his stomach. I don't like that. I can put his arms around you and hold on to the okay. ball. Then you get a little jump ball out. Yeah, you saw Clarence Warren do it in the first half. Two-point lead for Western with exactly three minutes to play. McNary, McNeil now off the fake. Tough shot. Look Tellus at Frank with a strong rebound. Too hard. And there's going to be a foul inside. They may give it to Wilfong, but he carried Sylvester Gray to the basket. That is no small feat. Sylvester Gray at 230 pounds. You'll see this aggressive. You were right. He's sort of taken over. He's got a will to win. Right in here now. Leaning in on him. That's going to be a two-shot foul. Both teams are over the limit with 2.50 to play. And Western Kentucky leading by two, 63-61. Make it a three-point lead. Memphis State took only one three-point opportunity against Michigan when they played it, when they played uh, Michigan. And Dwight Boyd took it and he made it. Yeah, they look to get it in tight. 15-foot type of team in. 65-61, Western Kentucky with 2.49 remaining. The winner will play Nevada-Las Vegas tomorrow night. We'll have it for you beginning at 9 o'clock Eastern. Wanted to go inside to Bailey, but here's Askew. Askew wants to clear out. He wants to take Swagger inside, and Swagger says, come on. And Askew says, in your face. Larry's got to think of Alexander again. How many personal fouls do you have on Marvin Alexander? Not that it matters now. Alexander has three personal. Uh, two, two and change. Askew is at 5-5 five to five here in the second half from the outside. 65-63 Western. McNeil with a running one-hander, and it goes. Fortunate roll. A four-point lead for Western with 2.04 to play. Another nail-biter like the last game. Nevada Las Vegas' Gerald Patio hit a jumper at the buzzer to give the running Rebels a uh -huh. two-point win. And here's a steal by Tellus Frank. Gray tried to clear for Askew. Right. Didn't see the ball. A little freshman mistake. Oh, yeah. I'm not so sure Askew should have thrown it either. Seven turnovers from Memphis State in the second half. Western up by four. They have control with a minute and 37 to play. We'll see if they try to milk some clock. Oh, boy. They <laughs> They're not milking clock. McNeil with the jump, and they're trying to ice it. And Here comes Askew. And they got it. Four on two. Nice dish to Wilfong. It's a two-point game. An opportune shot. McNeil made that last one, got the roll. Going for it all. You wonder if they should not have taken more time off the clock in the last sequence. Or but tried to get a better one. Maybe. Yeah, I agree with you. you know? Two-point game, Western on top of the minute and five to play. Johnson with the lead in. It doesn't go, and a big rebound for Sylvester Gray. Now Memphis State can tie the game or maybe take the lead depending on the shot selection. Western's been in a hurry, too. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Don't know. I'm sure Mary Arnold's won there. 45 seconds remaining. 29 on the shot clock. Askew, he's been the big gun in the second half. Soft jumper ties it up at 67. Might look for one right now. And you know, and Murray Arnold now is telling him, sit it down, we're gonna play for one, and they call for timeout. Western still has two timeouts remaining. A judicious timeout with 28 seconds remaining. It's really the only thing you can do. It's tough to get it back in, but off the last two shots, I'm sure he wants to describe exactly what type of shot he wants. I would think he'd try and go down to the wire, end up with it inside, at least get to the foul line. Here's your matchup for tomorrow night, depending, of course, Nevada-Las Vegas, a two-point winner and a thriller over Temple in the first game. Met the state of Western Kentucky, whoever wins this one, and it's tied at 67. You look at the score sheet and you see Tellus Frank has 17 points, 16 of those in the second half. First nine minutes is all he played in the first half. That's right. And he had the two fouls. They tried to save him and Chris Johnson. And the big guy, Lawrence Martin, ended up with three in the first half. Tellus Frank has more than half of Western Kentucky's points in this 
second 20 minutes of basketball. Remember how hard it is to get in, even in college, yep. where you can go in the backcourt. So now the situation is this, 28 seconds remaining. Western Kentucky and Memphis State deadlocked at 67, but it is Western's ball. Shot clock is turned off, obviously, with 28 seconds remaining. There's the timeout situation. Actually, Western has two timeouts remaining, not three. McNary off the inbound. Let's we'll see if they're patient. Swagger, you've got to believe they're going to look for Frank or Kennard inside. They don't get the shot, but get the foul. A little delay outside the run time. Look for the big guys, you're right. 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds remaining. They want Frank inside. Kennard Johnson with the fake. We're going to get a whistle and a foul called on Alexander. What a fake. He did it before, if you recall. Just really pump faking beautifully. Kennard Johnson. And Marvin Alexander, who had been out. That's his fourth, I believe. You'll see the pump fake, which sets this up. McNary delivering the ball. Good pump, good use of the dribble. And, of course, he had some ball. Kennard Johnson has missed his last two free throws tonight, both of those occurring in the first half. And now Memphis State calls timeout just to ice Johnson just a little bit. With five seconds remaining, we are tied at 67, and it all rests on the shoulders how broad they are of Kennard Johnson. Johnson was the Ohio Player of the Year in high school in Cincinnati. Last year he shot 66% from the free throw line. Thus far, 91 coming into the game. Missed two of his last three tonight. Statistics early on from the line, you know. Oh, absolutely. And of course, even in the huddle now, I'm sure Murray Arnold is saying, look, after he makes both of them, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> right, the good, and then, good. And then you might wink in case, you know, if he misses, slap it back out. And of course, right now, Memphis State thinking of both ends. If they make it, where do we want to get the basketball? They also have two times out. They may run at the half court and call one. Meanwhile, the man that has not even left the arena and his team played, what, two hours ago, Jerry Tarkanian, is standing behind the Memphis State bench. He's not left. He's still numb he's st from his win. He's, he's waiting to be interviewed again. Well, after Gerald Patio took the bad shot, you know, he ends up the hero. One for three. That's uh, all of the first half. So Kennard Johnson has not taken a free throw here in the second half. All of that means nothing. It's the question of, you know, he's going to go to the line and shoot two. He's got to make one out of the two to put the pressure on Memphis State. And they ice him again. So Memphis State takes their timeout. They still have one more remaining. So you don't want to use them all. You want to save one. I think he's saving one in case he makes both to get it at least the half court right. as quickly as possible and set one up. This is strictly trying to tighten the muscles. Trying to make them pull the string a little bit. The, mus the muscles, the arms, legs, and neck. The one muscle, <laughs> the one that counts the most, the head. Good second half. Oh yeah, much better. Much better than the first half. First half, uh, a little lethargic at points. Uh, bad shooting by both teams, but teams have shot better. With a better pace game, I think, in the second half. But that was to be expected. I saw some ability this half, too. It was sort of hidden with the power game in the first half. Memphis State out of the Sun Belt, or rather, Western Kentucky out of the Sun Belt Conference. Memphis State out of the Metro. Now, kid, we're not supposed to root for anybody, but I love to see kids walk to the line and nail it in this kind of a situation. It's great for them, something they'll never forget the rest of their life. So it's on the shoulders of this man, Kennard Johnson of Western Kentucky. He'll go to the line for two shots. The score is tied with five seconds left. It's still tied. Good stroke. That's the only thing you want from a player. Give it a chance. Bend the knees, get it up there with a chance to clock. He's missed the three in a row the last three he's taken here tonight. This is a big one. One point Western lead and Western calls timeout. So they have one timeout remaining. I don't understand that timeout. Well, I, I'm not, you know, I'm sure, I know what Murray Arnold's thinking, but I'm not so sure I want to give them the opportunity. Now you're giving them a freebie to set it up to get it in. Then you've got one left to call it at half court. There's a lot of things you can do, but the Michael Jordan look. And he knew 
He even paid attention to what the coach wanted after the free throw. Right. Murray said to him, look, when you miss the first and make the second, immediately call timeout. <laughs> now, you know, Murray Arnold, of course, thinking I want them to know exactly what I want defensively from you people. So he called the timeout. Of course, the buzzer, John kind of get a little itchy. Well, John's got a date. We'll see. Memphis State with a chance to go for it all now. You might look for something deeper, at least the half court. They got five seconds, which is plenty of time to push it up the floor from the half court in. Alexander to trigger the inbound, and he goes to Sylvester Gray, the freshman. Quickly gives it to Boyd with two. Loose ball. That is all she wrote. The game is over. They did not get a shot away. And Western Kentucky's Hilltoppers will be meeting Jerry Tarkanian's Nevada Las Vegas running Rebels tomorrow night. We will have it for you at 9 Eastern time. Kennard Johnson, the big guys for Western Kentucky, pull it out. Tell Kent, us Frank and Kennard Johnson. You're right. Interesting second game, exciting second game, just like the first one. Nevada Las Vegas beats Temple with a jump shot at the buzzer. Here, Kennard Johnson sinks a free throw with five seconds left. And uh, we'll come back. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a hold of Murray Arnold, the coach of Western Kentucky, and the big the players of the game right after this. Back at Madison Square Garden, there you see the final of the second semifinal. Western Kentucky beats Memphis State 68-67. They'll play the running Rebels of Nevada Las Vegas for the NIT preseason Big Apple Championship. And here with Bruce Beck is Murray Arnold. Thank you, Howard. Murray Arnold, you called a timeout late with the lead. Why? Well, basically, a uh, situation in the last one, uh, basically we feel like we have more defensive options with that thing going. We want to make sure we were set defensively and uh, with whatever we wanted to do. So generally speaking, on the last trip of the game, the offense may try to go quickly. We feel like we want to make sure we're defensively organized. You had to juggle the lineup a lot tonight, especially in the first half because of foul difficulty. Well, very definitely. We were groping with our lineup because of foul trouble and because they're a very good team and we're hurting, uh, hurting us with our defense. And we just kept uh, kept putting people in the ballgame. The same thing against Texas Christian. We're still in that early stage of kind of groping to find out what will go best for us. By the way, I thought uh, Memphis State Larry Finch deserves credit for a very smart play to begin the second half. I want to make sure and compliment him on it because it was my fault. We should have been ready, and they picked up a big basket and a foul on Kennard, so uh, uh, that was smart. He's done a great job with his team, and uh, hey, we'd rather be maybe lucky than good. We're very fortunate to win the game. Final play, what were you looking to do in that last offensive possession when Johnson was fouled? Well, basically run the clock down to somewhere around eight seconds and penetrated the basket. We wanted to take it inside or drive it, figuring that we ought to get a good shot or get to the line. And uh, we did a great job of getting it to Kennard. He powered at the basket and put himself on the line. And you can't ask for a better trip than that under that kind of clutch pressure. Tell us, Frank, big second half really came alive for you offensively and off the offensive boards. Well, he's a great player for us, and I think the first half when we played three big guys, he's out of the floor as a perimeter player. The second half, we played him inside, which gave him more chance to be around the basket and really get some big man things done for us. And I thought he had some big plays. When he rebounded Ray Swaggers, missed jumper, and scored, hey, that was a big-time follow, and I thought a very key basket. UNLV is next. Your thoughts going in? I think they're a great team. Both those teams I watched in the first game are super. You know, I've said this is the greatest tournament in the country other than the Final 16 the NCAA, and I think this proves it. Two great games. Las Vegas is what? The top 10 in almost everybody's polls. They belong there. All right, congratulations, Coach. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it. Murray Arnold, the winning head coach, as Western Kentucky advances to the final to take on UNLV. And here at the Garden, a couple of close games that went down to the wire. The championship game tomorrow night. UNLV with the winning shot made by Gerald Patio at the buzzer up against Western Kentucky as Canner Johnson hits the winning free throw with five seconds left. Final once again, Hilltopper 68, Memphis State 67. We'll have a final word in a moment. Here's the score of the second semifinal game. Western Kentucky beats Memphis State 68 to 67. That follows on the heels of the first semifinal game where Nevada Las Vegas beat Temple by the score of 78 to 76. We could not have asked for more exciting finishes in either game. Uh, very exciting. And I thought for this time of the year, the technical aspect was excellent. Players poised, knew what they wanted done. The end of this particular game, they ran their clock down. They got exactly what they wanted. They got it inside. And Kennard, what a beautiful pump fake. I mean, that's out of the Bobby Knight school. Pump and go under. 
Tomorrow night, it's Nevada, Las Vegas, of course, with the 26-year veteran coach, Jerry Tarkanian. Murray Arnold in his first year at Western Kentucky, but he's not a rookie by any stretch of the imagination. He's been around for 15 years. I think it'll be an interesting game. Oh, I do. I think it's power against finesse, the thoroughbreds against the real workhorses. Who do you think? Well, I think Vegas, if it gets up and down, has a good chance, but it becomes a power game, and I'm not hedging. I, I think Western Kentucky's got final four material. That's an interesting observation. Interesting game in the first game because uh, Nevada-Las Vegas obviously more, was more of a favorite, but Temple led by a dozen points in that first game. Nevada-Las Vegas continued to push the ball up the floor and eventually wins the game uh, on Gerald Patio's jumper at the buzzer. In the second game, a more of a, a slowdown type of a game, not intentionally, just bad shooting in the first half, although both teams, it seemed to have come alive in the second 20 minutes of basketball, but that's to be expected. It's still early. From an enjoyment end, I thought Memphis State extending the floor and pressing excited you, excited the crowd, and got Western Kentucky into, into motion a little bit. They then got some easier shots. First half, they struggled a little bit. There's your matchup for tomorrow night's final. You'll see it beginning at 9 Eastern time. The running Rebels of Nevada, Las Vegas against the Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky, our thanks to Harry Robinson, our statistician, to Bruce Beck for some rather interesting, if not curious, <laughs> uh, sideline work uh, with the crowd. And, uh, of course, to thanks to you, Bill Raftery, for providing the analysis here in each of the uh, semifinal matchups. So for Bill Raftery, I'm Howard David. Again, a reminder that the AT&T Tennis Challenge will be coming up next on USA. The executive producer for USA Sports is Jim Zrake. Tonight's games were produced by Tim Rapley and Brad Fuss. Directed by Bill Swing. Associate producers Jim Cade and Brian Burke. Production manager Barbara Travers. The executive in charge of production, Dick Ross. The NIT Classic Semifinals are a presentation of USA Sports in conjunction with Mislu TV Sports.